Hey guys, we're back. It's a lazy day with Ivan 2104. It's kind of like summer's here, well, spring. But anyway, it's warm, we're in shorts, we're hanging out. We decided to do a job we should have done a while ago. We were supposed to have done quite a while ago. Eh, it happens. So our control arms in the Lada, during the suspension video, we talked about how we're going to put urethane uh, bushings in them. We didn't do it, mainly because the bolts were seized into the sleeves and we kind of ran out of time, so we just threw them on uh, a bench for another time. Well, now the rubber bushings are starting to clunk and the rear end is starting to move around on its own, just, just a little. Yeah. So today we're going to basically share the misery that is removing these arms and changing the bushings for you. It's not really a how-to, it's just how much it sucks. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, so join us for that and uh, we'll kick off. Well, Sean elevates the car. I'm gonna take a moment to show you the parts we're putting in. These are the urethane bushings. All of this here is in a language I don't read, but I'm very sure that this is a recipe for either kvass or borscht. I'm not sure which. Uh, the check mark here would probably tell me if I knew. Sean, does 2101 mean borscht or does it mean kvass? What? Well, 2101. Yeah. Does that mean kvass or borscht recipe? Oh, uh, neither do I. Anyway, at any rate, it's really handy that they included this recipe. You can cut that out, put it on your fridge, cook it sometime. On the back side though, we have what we're after, urethane. So these are stiffer, more rigid, and more, uh, more better. Come under here. How bad is bad? Bad. You see all the cracking through here, which is kind of normal, but more importantly from this side, you can kind of see a gap actually creating between the rubber and the steel. And with that gap, it's letting the diff rock and we're getting clunks on acceleration and decel. That is a problem. How much shake is there if you pull on them? Can you move them? Not really. This thing's so stiff in the back that try and oh, yeah. try and find something to pull on on this thing. There. Nope. Okay. Try and show there, and then I'll. Yeah, it's not the nicest thing in the world. No, it's hard to tell, but you feel it more when you're driving. So the first step then is to start disconnecting bolts and trying to see if we can coax these things out of the sleeves but chances are it's gonna get medieval. Sean that's not the control arm I'm sure of it. I know but you gotta get the shock bolts and everything out of the way first. This is the new format we're trying for Grand Touring Concepts it's called Summer with Beverages. If you like this format of our technical how-to videos be sure to write to us and let us know. It can only be done with strong beer. Strong beer. This one by Two Sergeants Brewing, which is close to my heart because they're ex-army guys and I'm an ex-army guy. <laughs> Don't play with it, break it free. Uh, frig. That one don't move. We're gonna need a breaker bar. See if I can make that thing turn. This is gonna be problematic already. Yeah. Worst from the worst, we'll uh, put the heads off. I don't want to do that. With me on this thing, either she's going to turn or break. We're going to find out right quick. I think she's turning the whole thing in the bushing. Exactly what it's doing. And this is exactly why we didn't want to do this in the winter. Yes. So now I'm going to go with a old trick that was taught to me for doing on leaf spring shackles. You tighten it up tight so it'll hold the collar and then you put a big Jesus bar on the end of her and try and turn the bolt in the collar with everything clamped in place. Well guys and gals, this is going to be one of them times of do as I say, not as I do. We're going to burn the bushing out and then heat the collar to try and get the seized bolt out. But never do this in flip flops. Usually you should have a uh, closed toed shoe, preferably a work boot. Never, never that. I'm going to keep my twitters out of the way.
Also, you shouldn't have heat near a uh, hydraulic gas shock either. Usually a bad no-no. Oh, she's spitting rubber. She's looking good now. There it goes. I hate burning out bushings. Absolutely despise it. I thought I was done with this when I uh, finished all the suspensions on my Mustangs, but here we are. Same game, different brand name. Doing the exact same thing. Last time I come away with blisters. You did too. Yeah, yeah, this is this is not the safest or more fun or interesting job you ever want to undertake. It smells awesome. It smells like a tire fire, exactly like that. All the bad parts of the burning rubber. Yeah, not like cool burnouts down the street smell. No. And it will burn. We'll let you know how this turns out. So to make sure nothing else in the car burns or catches fire, took a wet rag and stuffed it up in the spring just to limit where the flames go. As long as the rag is wet, the rag don't burn. And this bushing is uninstalling itself. Isn't that convenient? Absolutely. Still burning the bushing. Yeah. And it goes on like this. This bushing continues to uninstall itself for us. Sean's set to work on the other one. And always do them opposite sides and top and bottom from each other. That way the upper one's holding the diff in place on one side, the lower's holding it on the other. Then while working on it, you can remove the other two. And then when you get them two done, you switch rolls. And off you go. Well, we got one of the upper control arms out and you can definitely see all of the cracks in the bushings and you can see how they weren't doing their job any longer. We'll throw this thing in the vise and we'll just twist on them with a screwdriver to see how much deflection there was. This is a super non-scientific test I love to do. You grab a screwdriver, throw it in there, and then just bend on stuff and see, see how things move. You can see there's quite a bit of compliance in that bushing. It is about done. So hopefully our urethane will be a much better option. Hey guys, we got the control arm out and bushing. Heat worked, always works. You get the sleeve out of this side. We've tried pushing on it, it doesn't really want to move. So I'm just going to apply some heat to the steel piece in the center, get it hot enough that it uh, unsticks itself from the rubber and then she'll kind of slide right out of there. So, this is the bushing uninstalling itself for us. It's awfully handy, we don't have to do really any work at all. And really now, we should nearly be able to That will clean itself of all the rubber, and this rubber here will turn into like this rubber here. Dead easy. Yep. There's a magic of paint, aftermarket racing control arms. This control arms are going to be so much faster. Ready to go in the right direction. We've got our red painted control arms, our bushings. Racing control arms. Racing control arms, now that they're red, makes them racy. And we've got some personal lubricant from the sock drawer. Yep, mountain biking finish line ceramic grease. Stuff I use on the bearings and bushings in my full suspension bike. It's expensive and a known aphrodisiac. And yes, some of my size mountain bikes. It's kind of a crazy thing. And definitely aphrodisiac. At $15 for that, it better be. Love you long time. Or wait, is this one? This was $25, sorry. The other stuff was $15. Also because mountain biking, therefore you can charge more. So with the personal lube installed, Sean's gonna now force these two together, just like... So they fit together like mom and dad. Yes. We love each other very much. Ah! Trying to go off the rails. Uh-oh. Bugger off. These are the parts we normally cut out, but you guys are gonna get to see them because it's that there sort are. of video. Check that out. And give them a tap, 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 tap. It's not just good. It's good enough. Good enough. Anyway, we're going to do this however Multiple. many bushings we have that many times over there, the yellow. We're going to do it that many times just like that, so we don't need to show you that. Get the steel bushing into the urethane bushing is actually very hard to do. The way I do it 
Because I'm using a 3 8 or 10 millimeter deep socket because it was thin and then chafers up to a big one. And that one there is just slightly smaller than that. So I kind of use it as a stepper. Just spread the hole bigger and bigger so... Don't make this weird. That one goes in there. I don't know how to describe it any other way. Right, blame it on my upbringing. That wasn't weird. That just gets weird. It's a shame you didn't have someone here to help you. Well, he's busy, I think. Well, mostly in, in... I will hold the gland end. You're giving me crap. There, see? Spread out more, and now she's going down in. We're good. And that'll chop the socket out, and then they'll be replaced by steel bushes. you don't have a press to do this, um, I don't know. You probably kind of do. You can use a big vise. Big vise will do it. Yeah, so for the home gamer who's only got rocks and a broken hammer, you're kind of out of luck. Yeah. Specialty store at that point, I think. But, it's in. Works. Ready to rock. We have one control arm with all the bushings installed, ready to put back in. One thing I recommend to do on all the bolts going back in, all the sliding surfaces, Use some anti-seize compound of some sort. That way nothing sticks on you, seizes, causes issues, makes you cry. It's a good um, plan. Well, if you burn yourself uh, taking a bushing out, you'll cry. So this is not chocolate icing then? No. This is the coppery goodness. And it doesn't taste good either. It, it, uh, no. It doesn't taste like chocolate either. No. It tastes like burning. Top. Man, this is going awesome. It's not going bad. Honestly, it's still easier than Mustangs. Oh, I made a mistake. This goes on the other side of bushing. Well played. Someone on the internet will yell at me and tell me I'm doing it wrong. That Stop. happens even when you do it right. I know. It, it does. No point in giving them excuses. That one? That was on there. Then, it goes up and in. Check this out. It's the last one. Everything last is in. Is in. I just gotta tighten up the control arm bolts now because I've left them all loose. We're gonna keep it at ride height, tighten everything up. Then I can put my last shock in, and we're good. We're yep. driving. Ready to roll, and this didn't go too badly. This was the only one that was terribly seized. Everything else just came out pretty smooth. Surprisingly cool. better and easier than we thought. Yeah. And even that one was not stuck bad. Once I got the bushing out, heated the hell out of that uh, steel insert, put a pair of vice grips on to hold it, walk the bolt out. No big deal. Smooth as sandpaper. Yeah. Yep. Fine grit sandpaper. Fine grit sandpaper. Kind Wicked of smooth, stuff. but a little bit rough. So, is all we have to do now is catch you guys on the outro. So, this is the part of the video where we appear more dirty, time's elapsed, things are installed, and we tell you how good it was or how well it went. It went pretty smooth, mostly. It's going to work very well because it's urethane, which is better than rubber, always. Yes. And on that note, we'll see you next time. Later.